Yeah, I guess I'll get us rolling. So um, this is something we've been chatting about, just getting together, working on coordination and collaboration. Um, we're switching up the monthly ZFAV club meetups to do it on free to Z. Um, Ryan and John got some cool back end stuff going on. We're putting it out into the Discord as well. And yeah, we just wanted to use this opportunity to kind of roll out a new concept for a call where we can work on highlighting current grantees or potential grantees and get some more collaboration and coordination going on and figuring out ways we can all work together and make sure we're not duplicating work and people can get involved. So we have um, Ian here, we have ZK Squirrel, and we got Mike from Alpha Day, which is a grantee, and we got Skylar um, from Free to Z, where we're streaming from as well, who is also a grantee. And so, yeah, we can use this uh, as kind of a casual way to just work together to figure out what a vision for this call going forward. And we can also use the time to for the grantees that are here on stage to kind of give updates on their grant if they want or things they'd like to see stem from from these calls and um yeah so maybe i, I can kick it right over to skylar maybe if you want to just kind of give a brief overview of free to z and you know um the collaboration we've been doing with the av club and doing calls from here and uh then we'll just kind of let it flow Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, free to see. Um, <clears throat> started it, just had a little idea around February 2022. And it was just that, hey, you know, one of, one of the most special things about Zcash, in my view, is that you can just post an address and you can just kind of leave it there and people aren't going to see, uh, you know, the transactions to and from that address. So I think. You know, that's that's like an underrated property that still needs kind of more just recognition of how that's like a pretty special thing, not to mention the encrypted memo. So I don't know, I kind of spent like six years just kind of pondering, you know, <laughs> that, that kind of power and just but one, one day I just kind of had this idea that like, oh, well, we could just make a thing where, you know, could just kind of advertise yourself and post your thing and so free to z um you know it, it's kind of like thinking about how you know big tech censorship uh gofundme only has 19 countries in the best case but it's all like intermediated they take a cut they can turn anyone off they can seize the funds so you know this kind of like family of problems like well I can I can make a website and you know people can kind of post a page and you know post their address and you know it's free you're free to donate you're free to receive funds um, so that's what kind of the Z is uh, you know in math it's the the big double stroke Z is the set of all integers which is kind of you know I, I think it's Aleph zero infinity if I'm not mistaking so it, it kind of like each little z in the set is where people want to go and what they want to do um so yeah i kind of like started it as just uh open-ended in this kind of way and it was initially it was kind of more on chain like it kind of was a little bit more like uh sec pages um but we've been kind of just growing as the community grows um you know, we've just been kind of adding different features and a lot of the kind of things kind of end up being off chain, which I think is okay. So a lot of the story is kind of finding the balance between, you know, where on chain is really appropriate and where off chain kind of provides the performance that, that, um, you know, people are used to seeing in like regular old web apps. And um, we, we've grown to about, a thousand all time which in some ways you know I, I don't know it's like i'm really pleased with how it's grown but then i'm you know it's like i kind of had visions that you know there's going to be a hundred thousand users within you know a couple of months but 
I have a very iterative approach, you know, so I think there's kind of two ways, you know, and a lot of people kind of enjoy the Apple way, call it, where you kind of like polish or re and refine your product for maybe even years. And then you unveil the like finished thing and everyone, you know, claps at the big conference. And um, Pre2Z has a much more kind of throw it out there and see what people think and then iterate on it approach um which i think are kind of the two main approaches to like launching something but um yeah no i, I, I don't know there's a there's kind of a lot to talk about um it's become like really kind of popular uh the bar probably our most popular countries are venezuela and uh brazil mm -hmm. um a little bit in africa a little bit u.s europe but um i've kind of embraced that um and, you know, I kind of really, I, I don't know, I've, I've kind of really liked how that's progressing. I mean, I guess there's you know, pluses and minuses, but um, yeah, yeah, it's just kind of people who actually, you know, really need it and see the value and can use it. Like, I, I'm kind of just embracing that and kind of growing it. And uh, yes, yeah, some like new creators <clears throat> on every day almost. And um i don't know like a lot of it is scratching my own itch so i, I love that <clears throat> i can be entertained and informed almost like completely with free to z now so you know facebook twitter blue sky like no nah, you know whatever like youtube like i'll just uh i'll just see what's on free to z you know and like listen to some music on there and read some news on there anyway but uh, yeah i'm i'm a really discursive person and i guess you can tell too so um <laughs> so maybe if you want to like dig in on any of these like topics or anything more yeah. specific but i can flail around for yeah, you know if, um, <laughs> i can dig in a little bit and if anybody wants to just chime in you know you don't have to raise your hand or anything but uh i'll just maybe focus on the point of um you know the that you get a lot of users from venezuela and brazil and the zcash global um squad and uh, I just think it's really cool that there, you know, there's a lot of collaboration. This is kind of, um, you know, to the point of this call, Free Disease started out or is still a current grantee. And to see um, some of these kind of niche communities within um, the Zcash ecosystem joining and using um, Free to Z and the live stream features, and then all the work we're doing in the AV Club to kind of do the routing and, and get it restreamed in different areas and translations. I think it's, it's really cool. And, um, the people we have up on the stage here now, you know, we all kind of join each other's stuff. You know, Squirrel is always in uh, the AV Club stuff. Mike from Alpha Day has been joining a lot, and we've been giving feedback on the Alpha Day grant and how to improve uh, the great work they've already done. So, um, yeah, I just, uh, we, you know, just back to the original point of kind of using this as a brainstorm for collaboration. Um, yeah, I just think it's great to see everybody here. I don't know if Squirrel you wanted to talk about or or Ian talk about Zek Hub. It was a big uh we did the you guys did the one year anniversary on Free to Z with Ian and that was really cool. So just another example of using Free to Z. And uh yeah, if anybody's got any ideas or wants to chat about what they're working on, uh please jump in. Okay, can I jump in real quick? So sure. I think one thing I wanted to kind of point out is that based on the response from the community these sort of like live streaming features have mm -hmm. been like really well received and there's like a really really i think powerful use case be made for free to z in that that area especially it, it's funny it was just talking with a, a lot of folks in the free to z community you know especially skylar and also i think crypto nativa just joined here that mm -hmm. i was not aware about the level and extent of censorship that's happening on a lot of the the streaming platforms, especially like YouTube, um, and so the, there's just a lot of viewpoints that are kind of like having a difficulty of of even being able to be expressed, you know, because of that, because of these sort of. And a lot of the times, it's not outright like censorship, like "Hey, we're going to shut down your channel," but it's like pulling away monetization. So if someone is a journalist, for instance, and makes a living out of that that's basically their bread and butter. So like they have to kind of tailor their viewpoints to where they can monetize effectively. And that that is kind of like a soft censorship, which is sort of like a little more pernicious yep. to a certain extent than, than, you know, just directly denying somebody. 
so I think the free Z, I mean, just to give you like a little preview, like we do see it as being a way for people to broadcast their unique ideas and also to be able to um, build community around that um, and have it, you know, I mean, there's a reason it's free, right? Like not free and cheap, but free and pay, mm -hmm. personal okay. liberty, freedom, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So I think there is like a really interesting opportunity there for for free to Z, yeah. which really dovetails with the long term interests also of Zcash, which is like promoting freedom in the world in general, I think. Absolutely. And then just to the monetization point, right, with, you know, using, you know, Skylar was touching on on chain versus off chain, but, you know, free to Z having a way for people to raise funds as well uh, ties in there and um, and not as uh, important necessarily as censorship, but like, for example, the Zec Hub call that happened recently, we switched over to free to Z because there was technical issues on Twitter, right? So it sparked a, a way to quickly move over to free to Z and just launch a call uh, that had people join. And I thought it went really well. And um, so, yeah, it's like a, a great moment for Zec Hub. They, uh, yeah, one year anniversary, like I mentioned, they just posted another update, a great update to the forum. So um, yeah, if Squirrel or Ian, like to jump in and say anything that would be great yeah hey um thanks can you guys hear me yeah sounds good cheers um good show uh yeah dan just on your point about um like it was very much an impromptu thing um when we switched over like twitter spaces was down and like we were like what do we do should we reschedule it and like it was actually like well, you know, we have free to Z there and it actually turned out that free to Z was a superior platform, uh, to Twitter spaces, like in every way. Um, because like the recording was just immediately available and then we could clip it and it's just perfect. And, mm -hmm. um, even just a few moments ago, we had the, um, Arborist call and yep. like there was audio dropping from it and like, we couldn't tell if people, um, were in and like people's names were different and like i was yep. just so i was i i think i should um or we should together present like the the option for mm. like because our risk calls are a community thing and yeah. i think uh it's it's um free to see is better than zoom <laughs> I'll, I'll end there thank you yeah <laughs> Yeah, well, we have some new features coming too. I've been thinking about you guys. So I think there needs to be um, kind of, I'm thinking of three or four modes to start a live. So um, you would have a broadcast mode where it's free. Um, and then that would be kind of broadcaster pays, but it's so, you know, if, if the organization itself, um, you know, so like you can imagine ZF or Subaru or, you know, they're not going to make, they, they just want to, some, some organizations just want to get their point out and they don't want, not, their goal isn't to like raise, you know, 10 cents a piece from the people they're trying to reach. They just want to, you know, so there's this broadcast mode anyway, where you could just uh, start it up and people can join for free. There's the mode right now where you, it's like subscribers only, and then probably a um, private mode, like a fully, um, uh, or at least like, you know, you need the secret URL and it's not, you know, going to be advertised and it's not going to be on the front page when we have like the who's live on the front page. So anyway, uh, like zero, zero cost subscriber only private and pay-per-view. So I think there actually will be like four modes, but I think what you guys would be most interested in is like the zero cost. Um, and like the, you know, this whole 2Z token thing, it's actually worked out really well. Um, what it, what it basically does right now is just kind of prevents, uh, of spam and abuse. So, you know, in theory, it'll be a way eventually at scale to, you know, have the platform be able to monetize. But in these early stages where, you know, everyone's pretty much an early adopter, uh, it's just a way to like kind of lock out potential spammers because this, you know, could, could cost uh, real money if it was, you know, at scale and abused, then, you know, we would just be like bleeding money to run this stuff. But at the like kind of early adopter, everyone's a genuine person. There's not a uh, spam and abuse. Uh, it's all, you know, almost free 
to run it the way it is right now, or maybe even free, it, like depends on like how many calls we do and you know, whatever. But, um, but yeah, I think it like the pricing can be like really reasonable, even at scale and in the long term. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of a note about where we are with like the tokens and stuff. And it was just kind of an easy way to, um, yeah, just prevent that s the spam and abuse is like, you know, you gotta, you gotta either know someone or you like someone gave you some twosies because they liked your page or you had some shielded Zcash and you bought some or, you know, there's a few ways you can kind of get in. You can just ask me for some, you know, and I'll say, you know, have, have at it. And then you can use the AI and do live streams and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I don't know. That's kind of worked out really nicely. Um, Cause that was kind of always one of my first concerns. Cause I want to make it like open and anonymous and, you know, if we ever add email, it'll be like completely optional and it'll just be kind of for, for the convenience of the user. But um, yeah, how do we like open it up to like absolutely anyone, but then kind of rein in the, uh, you know, the potential for just people, you know, costing us a lot of money and not mm -hmm. providing us any value, or you know. So, you know, it's a little, maybe a little bit ham fisted uh, way. And, you know, we're just kind of rolling with the punches, but it's worked pretty well. Um, better than so, I expected, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, so one thing I, I want to just point out with, uh, with this is sort of different pay, payment sort of models we have with, with, uh, with live streams. Uh, one thing that's been kind of surprising to me and not at all intuitive is to a certain extent having four cost options for broadcasting is better than just completely free. Um, because like when it's free, like with YouTube, for instance, it's not, I mean, nothing's really free, right? So like, it's cause they're taking your data, they're massaging it, they're doing all these things. So there's all of these sort of like very negative sort of factors around having a completely free broadcast that I think more people are becoming aware of now. And then you all have on top of that, that a lot of, especially dealing with sort of like niche communities or folks who have particular interests, there is a lot of uh, commitment from the audience to want to support the creators and support the broadcasters. And there's no like really easy or clean way to do that. I mean, like a really extreme example of that is with uh, like TikTok these days where they have now their own internal, it's like not a token, they call it like a point system or something. Um, but if you want to donate, TikTok's going to take like, it's like, I think 77% of a cut, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just straight up robbery at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, so being able to have like some transparency around pricing and know that you're actually supporting the creators that you want to support, you know, in a reasonable way, I think that's actually a, a big, like a huge win, um, mm -hmm. and sort of advantage to, to the platform we're building here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, let's maybe we could transition to um, just circle back to maybe like the concept behind, you know, using these platforms, collaborate, you know, we all have these like kind of disparate uh, niche kind of meetups and all getting together in ways um, like this, I think is really cool and, and rolling out this, you know, this is sort of the pilot brainstorm uh, call to figure out like if this would be useful is this something everybody would want could we bring in more grantees how can we get people coordinating better and working on stuff and um, yeah maybe I don't want to put you on the spot Ian but like you got a lot of experience with community building and you're you got your hand in a lot of buckets like do you see something like this as being valuable or um, how, to, how to improve that in in the Zcash ecosystem <clears throat> yeah, so can you, you guys can hear me. Just want to make sure I'm testing this mic. Cool. So something like I've been thinking about um, is one, the idea that like having more dedicated community members is better than like having fans on Twitter or TikTok or Instagram or whatever, right? Like people who are actually contributing or like, like providing like a lot of meaningful, tangible value yeah. um, help drive things forward a bit more. So some, for example, like, like there's a project called DarkFi. Um, they're like a, a cryptocurrency project um, that's like in the privacy space. And to like get into their chats, you have to like download their software. You have to like get into their IRC chat. Like you have to like do it on command line, right? Like you can't like just get into a Telegram or a Discord. Like you have to take some like onus on yourself to like go into that. 
-hmm. And while that might not be the acquisition strategy that like brings in a bunch of people, that's going to like bring people who are really dedicated because it takes a substantial amount of effort to even get into that chat, right? You yeah. have to be technically adept, you have to know how to do it, et cetera. Yeah. So like, I think by having platforms outside of like massive social media corporations is actually super effective because you can have more discussions with people that are like really interested and they're going to try to drive things forward. So I'd say that's what, like using free to Z like makes a lot of sense there. Cause it's like a Zcash platform. There's a lot of good functionality. Like when we used it for the Zek Hub thing, I was like super surprised and like really enjoyed the experience. I thought it was no different really than using like Riverside, which is what Zek Hub kind of used for its podcast for a while, which is a podcasting yeah. platform. I thought it was very similar. Um, so I thought that was dope. And then you could kind of like, for example, like like cake wallet in the monero community does a really really good job of having like a branded presence on social media for example right mm -hmm. so like you look at these i know zingo is starting to do some stuff but if you look at like why wallet there's not a lot of like marketing efforts around onboarding people in the why wallet like so could mm -hmm. could people I, I don't even know if like the developer around if han would even care i don't think he would care if people just started posting stuff on twitter right mm -hmm. i think he'd be like oh that's great Right. Yeah, so like why like community could be like, hey, we're gonna hold like a white wallet marketing call and we're gonna like yeah. you know, try to like you know, like we're gonna try to like sync around that. And then you could have like four to five people kind of jump into that call and like really like crank out a lot of stuff. Um, so I think if you have like specific kind of outcomes as well with these types of calls, it could be really, really, really cool. Like the grantees could come and be like, Hey, I need marketing support, I need yeah. customer support, I need all these different things. Like, let's jump on this AV club free to Z call and let's hash those out. And I think building those smaller niche contributor communities is like way more valuable than trying to like run a marketing campaign, like get players yeah. on Twitter. Like that's where my mind is now gone after, oh, sorry, after spending yeah. some time in this for the last little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. That's kind of exactly what I was hoping to get at here is like using, right? So you have the, we have these kind of small group of people who are always contributing and getting together with core contributors from the different ones and getting together to Ian's point and like hashing certain specific stuff out and helping grantees figure out what they need or how uh, Zek Hub can help or how AV Club can help and start pushing this stuff kind of organically. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah. one thing, I, one thing I want to add, because Skylar just mentioned it in the chat, like paying people in Zcash, that's all I kind of saw. saw um, um, so I don't know if there's any additional context to that message, but like mm -hmm. you could theoretically, right? Like, couldn't you create a free to Z page for like the specific call? So if it's like, hey, this group that hopped on this call today, the end goal is to like do, for example, marketing for Y Wallet. Mm -hmm. If you want to fund their efforts there, you know, if you want to like tip them or fund them or whatever, you can fund this page and like send them directly. And people can do that anonymously. They can do that docs. They can do it an ever like ever level of like privacy that they want. Yeah. That that seems like a really cool idea too. That like people could like take like kind of like have these community projects that are just funded by community members. I think that'd be cool yeah. too. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know if you, I, I I'm pretty sure you could do that. Yeah. And Squirrel's giving me a thumbs up. So I think we can yeah. do that. Cool. Um. Yeah. I guess since we got thanks, Ian. Um. We got Mike from Alpha Day on the call. So Alpha Day is another uh, ZCG grant. And I think it's a great example of kind of, it was almost like a starting point really for, you know, when, when we were all talking about this internally about kind of rolling out some sort of call like this where Mike would just join, has been joining um, some AV club calls and just to receive uh, specific feedback where everybody can give feedback on the Alpha Day dashboard. What would you like to see? Um, you know, they did some amazing work and um, they've been an amazing collaborator. So uh, maybe Mike, if you want to just talk to, to that point about like collaborating and getting iterative feedback um, in calls like this from, from the community and if that's been valuable or not. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's certainly been valuable. Uh, we've, uh, we've created so much value in the Zcash dashboard. Uh, I'll link you guys uh, the website so you can go take a look. So. Yeah. The idea here is to aggregate everything that, uh, let's say, newcomers or even existing users uh, would need to keep up with Zcash, right? Uh, data, uh, news, uh, let's say the next having a lot of lot of data that uh, any any kind of data that has to do with Zcash. Uh, so we kind of help. We're trying to help users and, and newcomers 
navigate through uh, the project to find out about the project, to use Zcash and anything else have you. Uh, so uh, we're still early on, of course. We uh, launched uh, in uh, la last year in August, and uh, we're recent. We've been recently focusing on uh, integrating more API uh, DApps, um, mostly on EVM. But also, since we're moving to Zcash and certain other chains, we want to integrate as much as possible. Uh, you know, find APIs, integrate information, integrate uh, DApps. And anything we can find to make it easy for newcomers to uh, use and to understand and to find out about, uh, well, in this case, Zcash or any other crypto uh, dashboard that we offer. Um, so take a look at the uh, dashboard if you guys want to. Mm -hmm. And since you guys already know uh, what's going on, more or less, right, in Zcash, you would have a better idea of what a newcomer would want to see, right? Uh, because we're going to be, we haven't really started marketing. You should know that we have around 10,000 monthly users now on average, but we want to increase that. Uh, I have started to look into uh, marketing now, uh, planning on marketing and strategies, how we can actually expand uh, while we're still in the bear market, uh, because mm -hmm. uh, well, when the bull run starts, it's already uh, too late, right? So yeah. I need to uh, start thinking now, make plans and uh, start rolling, you know, I yeah. try to do something. Um, and as our platform gr uh, grows, of course, this is going to also reflect on Zcash because uh, you are going to get uh, more uh, exposure to our community and vice versa, of course, in this case. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, we're hoping to build uh, as many uh, things as we can. So if you guys can give me some, some feedback, uh, e either here or on Discord, you can find me on Discord. I always uh, check the channel, uh, just yeah. uh, ping me and uh, we can add or remove if everyone agrees of course awesome thank you mike yeah and then uh you know just to tie it back into some of what ian was saying about like very focused collaboration calls with um you know people who are very interested in contributing is a perfect example of what mike is talking about here okay we want to ramp up marketing we've been collaborating as a community on how to improve the alpha day dashboard and rolling out like a very um community focused um strategy in collaboration with alpha day makes a lot of sense right it, to your point mike about like building in the bear market and pushing that out um you know it provides an opportunity for um, other ecosystems that use alpha day to see the zcash ecosystem tagging alpha day sharing the dashboard and there could be a lot of cross promotion opportunities there absolutely people, yeah yep. so absolutely. that's very exciting yeah we'll, we'll definitely um work on that going forward and um, that's sort of the this, uh, point of uh, moving forward with these calls, right? So we're very happy that it started with Alpha Day, and um, we'd love to continue it with, with other grantees. This, this call was a little last minute, and we're just kind of uh, winging it here to brainstorm and see what everybody thinks. But um, with a little more leeway and uh, time, you know, some of these next meetups will have enough time to bring on more grantees and maybe have a more focused uh, discussion to... Uh, that brings results um, that like Ian was talking about. So yeah, who, who do we have on the stage here? Crypto Nativa or Rob Marn, would you guys like to uh, jump in with any, anything? Yeah, I would like to say that I think like in crypto city we are having a big improvement almost every week. Like we have new, um, Futures uh, and new possibilities to to make contributions and to grow the, the community. So I I see like basically in the, at this point I see like two big opportunities on free to see first is like the the restreaming uh, the possibility to restream not just from uh, in, in different platforms. That's one, and the second one uh, is the possibility to um, avoid or be at a safe space to avoid censorship. Like I, I think like those two um, uh, futures that are coming in the uh, coming up are like a great contribution, not not just for the community that uh, is already using uh, free to see, 
but uh, for society. Uh, because I see like censorship is growing in the in the media, is growing in the social media. And I think free to see can be a, uh, a free space and a safe space, especially for, for uh, journalists. And, and obviously I, I think we have to um, uh, maintain and keep the, um, the limits, right? We, we were talking about the limits of that freedom. Like freedom of speech cannot be uh, understanding and freedom to, for uh, promote violence or uh, or crimes or hate, right? But this mm -hmm. is freedom of speech is one of the of, of uh, a principal rights or basic rights for as a as a as a human. So I think free to see is making a huge contribution on on that aspect uh, to society and I and I'm very happy to see like we are having a new futures almost every every week and I think that another thing is like I, I'm happy to see that this is coming uh, from the community so it's like it, we all are contributing in one way or, not, or another to build free to see and it's very open it's very open to contributions that's what I want to say. Thank you so much. Thanks, Crypto Well said. Yeah, absolutely, John. Um, cool. Yeah, Ryan, did you want to jump in? Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I'm not going to have my camera on. And, if not, uh, anybody else? Well, how many? Can you hear me? Uh, we can no. bring anybody up to the stage as yeah. well. If, yeah. Hey, sorry, my microphone is off. Um, yeah, so I uh, don't have my camera on. Um, but I would like to contribute a little bit to this conversation. Uh, I, I like what's being said about the, the guiding values and the principles of privacy being the thing, privacy and anti-censorship, being the thing that is bringing our community together. A lot of these software projects, a lot of these tech projects, they, the community joins around the tech, and I feel like our community is joining around principles and around values. And this is a very powerful thing if we can figure out how to uh, sort of take advantage of that. I, I don't know if that's the right word, but if we can lean into it and, um, and really embrace it, then th this is where we can get this cross community communication going. Because I, I like what Ian was saying about the fact that like, we, we're starting to see these niche communities in Zcash. And that's really, really great. And we now have the challenge of figuring out how to communicate between these communities. And I'm feeling super lucky that we have tools like Free to Z. We have tools like Alpha Day and Zek Hub to be able to, to coalesce these communities, mm -hmm. to bring us together, to give us ways to communicate. And the work that... Um, that we've been doing in the in the AV club that John uh, started with the automatic translations, which is what Rob is putting up here. That is uh, another tool that's going to help us to be able to to communicate between uh, between communities. And I just want to point out what Rob is doing here. Um, we're we're running a sort of tests for a Zcon four live stream, which will be a similar thing uh, with the automatic transcription and translation. And I believe there's going to be some commentary and interaction from the Spanish speaking community. This is something we've never had before for Zcon. And yeah. it's not anything I've seen for any conferences. So yeah. it gives me goosebumps. It's like, it's so exciting to me that, uh, that we're all able to, to communicate on this level about the, the topics that we're passionate about, about the values that we're passionate about. Um, and, I, I definitely want the AV club meetings, which happen on Tuesday and the workshops that happen on Wednesday. I want those to be open community spaces where you can come and participate, learn, collaborate, teach, and, yep. um, and we can all work on this stuff together. And that could help uh, in the same way that these niche communities are helping to build a strong foundation for the overall Zcash community. Um, the the AV club spaces can be that as well. Those will probably continue to happen on Discord um, because of the 
uh, some remaining limitations with free to z and the format of those meetings and the workshops. But I definitely want to start using free to z as much as possible and and work with um, with Skylar and Jonathan to see if we can suss out some of the um, some of the the perfections and um, some of the fine tuning stuff like the calendar. I think that mm -hmm. um, Skylar, the calendars are going to be amazing. That's a really valuable tool to help the community organize by giving people the power to organize themselves. And then we integrate all of that into the Alpha Day dashboard. And now anyone who is publishing events on free to Z can be seen on the Zcash dashboard in Alpha Day. And this is where we can, I think we'll really start to see a lot of growth. Oh, one more thing, Rob. Uh, the this this cropping that's happening in free to Z that doesn't happen in Firefox. So, like you can see that your your slides, your presentation is cropped along the edges on free to Z, and this appears to be a Brave issue. So, if you switch mm. to Firefox, then that doesn't happen. That's useful for anyone else who uses OBS to stream into uh, into free to Z with um, the virtual camera. I just wanted to touch on one of the things you said, Ryan. So, you know, the the idea of using these the, these calls and um, getting together with everybody to collaborate. Um, what's really nice about all this translation work and you know these different language speaking niche uh, parts of the Zcash ecosystem, all this translation work is just a really great way to keep everybody up to date keep everybody involved it provides all these different opportunities and different ways where people can contribute um like ryan you recently i think yesterday we just posted about all the different ways people can get involved in uh the av club and it's like a lot of similar ways um, everybody supporting each other and these different skills that everybody can learn and translations allows everybody from all these different smaller niches to either implement similar roles or somebody who learns something in the AV club can go and take it to so, uh, one of the other aspects of the ecosystem. And then it just, it's like a really great way um, for everybody to stay on the same page and collaborate. Yeah, on the topic of the calendars, um, yeah, Mike's here actually. So Alpha Day has calendars, it was the idea. And so is there like a way to put a, like an ICS into Alpha Day and basically, um, is that a format or? Uh, we currently uh, already import our events uh, from another, another source. We do use IP uh, APIs and uh, RSSs, uh, RSS feeds, um, but anything else can be done manually. So if you guys want me to add, like for instance, there were a few events like Zcon uh, that I added myself manually. I can do that as well. Uh, we do prefer to do it automatically, of course. So if you want to give me the source that you want me to pick the events from, uh, I can go and uh, ask uh, Paris, who is our content editor, and see if he can actually manage to do that. If not, then maybe I can talk to the uh, devs and see if we can uh, do something about it. And uh, yeah. I can get back to you on it later. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm about to go syndication crazy. Like I'm I'm kind of surprised that this hasn't really been in my view um, until like recently. This like topic of RSS has come up a lot, and yeah, I'm just kind of realizing, you know, like the everyone's trying to take, you know, like this great podcast technology, and kind of like a lot of people are trying to make it into their walled garden where they have their own APIs like Cough Spotify whatever um but this like rss is already this like wonderful decentralized technology that's you know it's old um but yeah it still has so much potential but so what i'm thinking is i'm gonna have each creator will have their own feed so they so you can have a podcast a vodcast just a feed of your actual pages so you could get it with a different client for instance and you know, if you don't want to log into free to Z and subscribe there and do the feeds and stuff on the free to Z platform, um, you know, you can have your own client where you just add the RSS feed and you can get people's content in your own client, you know, basically. Um, but yeah, then, I, but I'm thinking then we can also like, you know, kind of have the aggregated feeds 
So you could have like the full free to Z like fire hose based on um, like Z page metadata. So I'm going to put um, time and place and enclosures. Um, but so then also you could have like an event. Um, so say, you know, Zcon 4 would be a good example. You know, it has a time and a place. And so we have these, you know, potential calendar feeds as well where upcoming events, um, cause yeah, it's, it, it becomes like a crazy problem cause there is so much going on and there's the, you know, or I have the call and, you know, there's the ZFAV and then we do every Monday, but then it's, there's all, is it daylight savings time? And, you know, where in the world are you? And is it 2130 and what's 2130 or is it 5 PM or like the yeah, other stuff, but actually that's, um, kind of one of my specialties over time you know that i've been in software is like this uh nightmare that is the gregorian calendar i'm actually pretty slick with all those tools i used to do that like 15 years ago i would make uh you know i don't know calendars for like uh schools and like school lunches and school dances and i did a bunch of like consulting but like it was a lot of it was around calendars so anyway long story short um I think we can do a pretty good job of that. And then people are kind of always operating in their own time, but then, you know, it's always UTC on the server, but then when someone's viewing it, it kind of like, you know, on the fly it converts and it's, you know, it's not rocket science, but I think we can do like a pretty good job with that. So, you know, there won't be so much like, yeah, 2100 UTC, what's it in Brazil? Is it Brazil daylight saving times? Ooh, Guadalajara is not on daylight saving time until next week. And, you know, there's all these little details that we can kind of handle with the, the magic of computers and programming languages and that kind of stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, this is just another example of, um, you know, what we were thinking about these calls, right? Uh, so we have a concept, okay, how do we increase coordination and ease of coordination through some sort of ecosystem calendar thing? Um, you know, we got alpha day and then all everything that Skylar was just touching on as far as integrating this kind of stuff into free to Z and there's just tons of crossover there. And it's a great way for us to like work together, not duplicate work and um, create something that's useful for the rest of the community. So, um, let's see, let me check the chat. Anything else you wanted to touch on, Ryan? Should we um, well, sort of um, wrap it up here? I think we're coming up on about 50 minutes, which I know on Mondays is sort of where uh, Skylar starts to wrap things up. Yeah. Based on some psychology um, thing that I can't remember what you referenced, but. I generally like to keep these AV club meetups to an hour. But we okay. were talking about the grants call being 90 minutes, because I think if we make this a recurring thing and people know yeah. that it's happening, and if we include more of the applicants, the grants applicants yeah. um, in the process and more of the grantees, then 90 minutes could totally be enough a time, maybe not even enough time. Um, but because this is the this is part of the AV club meetup and we're used to those being an hour, we can we can definitely wrap it up. Um, I wanted one more thing I wanted to mention since Rob's got his uh, his stream working and it looks awesome now. That looks really cool. Um, I, we were talking about how to distribute these streams during Zcon 4 and uh, like there's there's the discord channels, the voice channels, free to Z. We'll be distributing the actual live stream um, through free to Z and then uh, we'll have Rob and hopefully other folks doing the streams out to other platforms with their own flavor, with their own twist. And uh, on the topic of community support, Rob is doing all of this through a crowdfunding campaign on free to Z. And if you haven't seen this yet, go check it out. It, it's a really awesome project. I'm very happy that it's happening and that it's moving forward and he's able to do this. It's a massive contribution to Zcon. Yeah. I can't overstate that. It's really gonna take us up to the next level, I think. Um, as far as the remote audience and remote attendance and remote participation. And this is all really important stuff to me. So very, very excited that he's able to move forward with this crowdfunding, that it seems to be working. And I can't wait to continue working with him and, and the rest of the, the Zcash and Espanol community. Absolutely. Yeah. 
A lot of cool things. Um, maybe we just chat a second about Zcon. Yeah, just a lot of cool stuff that we're working on at the foundation uh, this year. It's a whole ZK week with one event prior and one event after. Um, you can get all that information on the zfnd.org website and then all the work that we're doing at the AV Club to, to Ryan's point and, and what Rob Martin's working on and Espanol community and translations. We want to have it be kind of the most participation focused for people who can't make it to Barcelona. We want everybody to feel like they can participate, like their voice is being heard, like they're getting valuable information out of the event, even virtually. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited. And if anybody wants to make it to Barcelona or can, um, please, uh, registration is still open. We'd love to have you there. And if you can't, we'd love to have you part, we'll, we'll uh, make it clear of the different ways to participate virtually. And we'd love to have you there as well. Awesome. Yeah, it's, I realize now that ZCon 4 is uh, less than a month away, or is it a month from today? Month from today. A yep. month from today. So yeah, let's all start talking about this. I know that we're all excited about it. So uh, yeah. let's let's continue talking about it. Share some stuff. Make some AI generated images and share that all out. And uh, whatever whatever tickles your fancy, as they say. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. I get. I think this was a good starting point. Um, you know, it was last minute. We had some good participation, and I think we have a, a path forward for. Um, improving these and getting more, even more participation from grantees. And like you said, Ryan, extending them. And um, yeah, I think this is a great jumping off point. Cool. So I think the next one we're going to do for the grant calls, uh, we were talking about doing this on the second Thursday of every month at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so that the next one will actually be in two weeks and then we'll start it on a monthly process. And I, I like this idea of doing it in two weeks. I mean, today was rushed in last minute, so two weeks yeah. isn't too tight at all. And we'll be mm -hmm. able to get a solid grant call in before ZCon, which I, I think it'll be really good because the focus of ZCon this year is so much on community that yep. uh, let's, give, let's give our grantees a platform to participate. I love, love it. it. Cool. Yep. Zcast right. in the house. <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you everybody for joining. Um, yeah, we really appreciate this. Uh, it was recorded. We'll get it out there. So those who weren't able to join live can uh, listen in and, and maybe come up with some cool ideas on what's next. And yeah, I'll see you guys all next time or in the discords and whatnot. Thank you, Dan. Thank you everyone for joining. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Cool. See ya. Bye.